You dreamer. Who amongst us is not a dreamer, at least some of the time? Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Audiophile Today. This is going to be an interesting one because today I'm going to be unboxing and doing a review of a Retro Life Player all-in-one music system that um, I recently uh, received and I'm going to be unboxing it in a minute. We're going to go over the features of it and then obviously I'll do a complete review of, of the system itself. But it's unique in the sense that it is a all-in-one system, a vinyl playback, it's a turntable, has two speakers. The turntable has internal amplification that I believe it's 20 watts per channel or a total of 40 watts combined. Uh, the volume knob is right on the turntable. It comes with a pre-installed Audio-Technica moving magnet, a phono cartridge, has its own dust cover, and uh, two speakers for stereo playback. The interesting thing is, is that it's also Bluetooth enabled, so if you have a Bluetooth device, you know, a portable player that's a digital player, you should be able to pair it with this unit and stream your music uh, straight through the Retro Life Player. Uh, UD006 is the particular number of this. And um, I'm interested to see how this works because in the last video I did about the headphone, um, uh, you know, the headphone, the modest headphone rig was the last video I did. Uh, one of the things that I showed was that little FIO uh, digital playback system, which is also a Bluetooth player. And um, it, I'm going to be checking to see just how easy it is to pair it with this unit and uh, how it sounds playing it back that way. So I think this is probably geared towards a more of an entry level uh, type of system for someone who wants to get into vinyl, hasn't really had any experience with it, but would like to have the experience of vinyl playback plus the more contemporary modern amenities of a Bluetooth capable system. So it's all in one, as I said, you don't need any other components. It plays the music right through the speakers itself. Uh, great for space saving if you are downsizing into a small apartment or a small condo and you have um, a space considerations, you're sending a, 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 one of your kids off to college to live in a dorm and, and they have you know very limited space, something like this could really be a good system for that. Um, now, I understand this uh, unit and multiple other uh, Retro Life uh, Player products on their website, link in the description below, are available in the United States, certainly, probably all through North America. I asked if it was available in the European Union, in the EU, on the, on the European mainland. I was told, yes, it is, but it is not, unfortunately, available for sale at present in the United Kingdom. So sorry, guys, if you're on some narrow boat on the canal and you would wanted something like this for um, convenience and space saving, you're out of luck. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get the knife out and cut this thing open and see what we got. The package is, is very solid. There's no soft spots or anything. It, it, it uh, seems to be very well, well packed. It shipped to me from California, so they must have a facility there. And let's see what we have. You. Cardboard cover, move that aside, and this is the dust cover that comes with it. Paste in plastic, and it also has more plastic on it to keep it, the acrylic from being scratched. Very nice. Set that aside. So far, the packaging looks good, and this is the little New Dreamer, UD006, owner's manual, very slim, which gives me hope that it will be very easy to use. Set that aside. 
the power supply in the form of a wall warp. Not, not unexpected. And, and here it is. Some speaker wire. It's apparently a USB cable in here. And um, some RCA, a single-ended uh, cable as well. This unit is also supposed to be able to, and this is the counterweight for the tone arm, you're supposed to be able to uh, basically record vinyl uh, to a digital format with this as well. I'm not certain to what extent I'm going to be able to get into that, but we shall see. All right, so lift the nates out. Here it is. We'll just throw that down. Throw that down. And this is the turntable itself. This is a um, walnut, natural walnut finish, and it's going to have to install the belt apparently. It's going to have a um, sub platter, and the platter is all going to be underneath. So let's put this down for a minute. And this is the platter. It has a nice felt mat that comes with it. That's pretty good. I'll turn it upside down to not scratch anything. So that is part one. There's another insert cardboard. And underneath are I want you the speakers. So let's kick that out. Don't want to fall. Hold on to them. There we go. Put this one out of here. Set that down for a second. Put this out. Oh, wow, that's how they go. Okay. Also wrapped in its own little plastic. And has the same basic wood finish as the turntable, so it's a match. And let's set that down now and get the other one. And here's the second one. They have little rubber feet on the bottom, which is pretty nice. It's a nice looking little speaker. It's very small. It's got it appears to have little port in the back and true to its name about retro life right these old tile spring uh, loaded uh, wire connectors you're going to need to pretty much use bare wire with this although you could probably use a small banana it might fit i have to check on that and see okay so box is now empty we've gotten that out of the box time to take a look get the setup straight, see what we have. Be right back. Yes, I've got the camera set up so that it's just vertically on top of the turntable looking straight down. This is the platter. It's upside down sitting on the spindle. And I'm going to try to do this so that it makes it easier to see. But this is the belt. What we're going to do is just put the belt around this outside part of the platter. Okay. So now we have the belt on with my finger holding it like this. We're going to turn it upside down. We're going to set it on the spindle. There we go. And it's on. And then simply put the felt mat on. Okay. Next is going to be the counterweight. Okay, so now that the unit is out of the box, the turntable is out of the box, uh, we're going to set the tone arm up and what we're going to wind up doing is getting the counterweight put on so that its tracking force is correct and then also the cartridge um, alignment, the overhang for the cartridge. Those are two very important um, elements of getting the turntable set up properly and in order to do that what we're going to use is, this is just a small digital scale it's an inexpensive one. I don't buy those name brands. This is just some 
you know, probably only cost about twenty dollars. It's not necessary for you to for you to set this turntable up with this, but I'm just using it to make certain that the index marks on the counterweight are correct. All right, and then the other thing will be this is a project align it. This is an, an alignment tool. Uh, project makes a turntable called an expression, like a one one point two or something along those lines, and that turntable has a tone arm with an effective length of 8.6 inches, which the specifications for this turntable say that that is an 8.6 inch arm. So it's important to use that tool to make certain that the cartridge alignment is actually the overhang is correct. So in order to get this done, now I've already done this as a dry run, so I know that this works. What we're gonna do is just we're going to pull this off. When you get it out of the box, out of the little bag it came in, it's going to have an Allen screw right here. Okay? It's, it's screwed down a little bit, so you need to loosen it up so that when you look in, the Allen screw is not impeding the ability of the um, counterweight to go onto the back of the tone arm. Now you're going to match the zero marker right up with this so that they're right in line. That's 3.53. That's close enough. It doesn't need to be any more perfect than that. You can see it's right there at 3.5. Okay, so that worked. All right, so let's put the tone arm back, lock it. We'll remove the scale. And now we will introduce the Align It tool. So basically, what this is designed to do is you put this on I've already selected the index marker for an 8.6 inch arm and the idea is you use the little spike to kind of measure where the center of the bearing would be which is going to be right about right there this tone on doesn't have an actual mark for it but that looks to be about where it would be and we're going to put this down and the idea now is Oh, it's moved. Okay, tape it so that it doesn't move. And then we'll move the tone arm over. And the null point would be right at the number one. There's a little tiny mark here. And so I've already made the adjustment because I did a dry run on this. So let me give you a little tip on this particular setup. When I took this out of the box, the cartridge was set all the way back to the back here. And so this part of the actual cartridge itself and that body of it was recessed behind the head shell. And I could tell right off that that was not gonna be a proper overhang, what we call overhang and alignment. Um, I think they probably put it on that way to protect it um, from damage hanging out like that during shipping. So what you're going to need to do in order to set this up is take that little Allen wrench that came with the tone arm and with the, with the, with the product and it fits right at the top. You just put them in. You can unscrew them very little bit and then just pull this forward as you see how it is. And then all the way forward as far as it'll go and then tighten it back up and then make certain that the leading edge of the cartridge here is parallel, directly parallel with the leading edge of the, the uh, end of the, the, uh, the, the head shell with the tone arm. And then that will give you basically good alignment. And with this table, that's about all the adjustments that you can do. Okay, so now I'm satisfied that the tone arm is set properly. We've got tracking forces right, 
the overhang is is right and now the next thing is is we're going to take a look and see what the features on the back of um, of the table show okay so what came in the box was an owner's manual a USB cable because you can um, basically sort of rip a vinyl to an mp3 file on your laptop if that's what you want to do I'm not going to use this because I'm not a fan of mp3 okay then the um, line out uh, these are line level RCA uh, single-ended plugs that came in the box and alignment tool I mean a rather Allen wrench that you use on the tone arm this is the cover that was on the um, the cartridge to protect it and obviously since we've already done the counterweight that was in the box as well all right so now let's take a look at what's on the back of it and all the features that it offers so right out of the gate I don't know if you can see it but right here is a ground post so that if you're going to use the line out feature where you're going to like maybe have an audio video receiver or an integrated amplifier and you're not going to use the built-in uh, phono preamp that's in the unit itself but you're going to use one that's you know in another amp or a standalone phono preamp this is what you would use you'd need to have a, a ground wire here now ground wire incidentally was not included in the package you're going to have to supply your own all right which i have one somewhere around here all right so this is the line out to use it basically what you would go right here where you can see it has phono, which is where it's set right now, or line. You switch it over to line if this is what you're going to use. All right, right now we'll go to phono. That's the USB port if you're going to do the vinyl ripping or recording the vinyl to an MP3 file. Then you have the speed. This is 33 or 45. It's set for 33, but it will spin at a 45 RPM rate. Then there's this a little button for the auto stop you can turn it on or off um, basically it's just when it gets to the end of the record it will just shut off and, and stop the turntable and then that convenient I think because if you are playing it at night and happen to fall asleep or something it gets to the end uh, and then the turntable won't just continue to spin in the dead wax and just you know wearing on your your stylus so that's a nice feature this is a pitch control um, basically it allows you to either slow things down or speed things up uh, if the, um, the the platter speed may be a little too fast, a little too slow. And then um, this is the connection where the power supply, which I've already plugged in. And then over here is for the connections for the speakers. Forgot to mention, it does come with about three feet of very thin speaker wire, but it's easy to see it's coated. One side of it is red, which is where you go on the positive. The other side of it is kind of red and black which would go to the neutral side on both the left and the right and then over here is the power switch for on or off okay and so that is basically um the back of the unit and has some nice features to it i have to admit you know it's a usb uh, enabled um, turntable it's got the power button where you can turn it on and off and then over here it's the phono you can set it for phono bluetooth in bluetooth out which i think is um very interesting okay so that is the setup and an explanation of the features off of the back the next step is going to be to set it up um, so that we can listen to it i've already got the speaker sort of connected the grills on the speakers are removable you can take them off if you like and let's take a quick peek here as to this looks like it's somewhere around the neighborhood of I guess maybe a four inch or so driver possibly five and then it looks like maybe a three-quarter inch tweeter so it's a two-way speaker and it's a ported design so that on the back you can see a, a hole here that's a port I think for the base it tells me that the speaker is going to probably perform better if it's backed up close to the to the rear wall okay and and when I set this up to listen that's exactly how it's going to be done 
Okay, this is good. So, let's sum up what we've done so far with this Retro Life Player UD006 all-in-one uh, turntable speaker system. So, first thing is that the packaging, I thought, was very well done. Very stoutly packaged, sturdy box. I don't think there's really much risk that the unit would be damaged in shipping unless the shipping company, UPS or whomever, was really brutal with it. Uh, that's always a possibility, but mine shipped to me from California, long way from here, and it arrived perfectly. And secondly, I thought that uh, the unboxing part of it was very simple, very straightforward. The unit came out easily. And then thirdly, the setup, I think, was by and large a very simple. Um, the instructions manual was very clear, very concise. If you just follow it, you're not going to have any problems with it. Um, the only two elements that may be a little bit of a concern to a novice who's never done this before would be getting the counterweight properly put on, and then the second part of it, and this would be perhaps the one niggle about this thing, about this unit, is the overhang of the cartridge. Because of the way it was shipped and the cartridge being pulled all the way to the back of the head shell area, it would leave someone who doesn't know any better to believe that that's properly set up, and it, it's not. You need to do what I showed you on, on, the, um, on the tone arm setup, a part of the video. It has to be unscrewed and moved all the way to the very forward most part of the head shell. By illustration, I want to show you what I mean by this. Now this is the head shell off of my Technics SL1210. This is an Audio-Technica AT150MLX moving magnet phono cartridge, and you can clearly see how much further the body of the cartridge protrudes past the end of the head shell. And then all the cartridge installs, that's basically it. The protractor, like I have for the project, which has indexing for an 8.6 8 inch tone off, doesn't lie. It tells the truth, okay? And so that is something that you need to take into consideration. I think the manufacturer probably would be better served if they put something in the manual that would explain that part. Because not everyone is gonna have the tools to be able to apply uh, to this type of a setup to make certain that it was right, the digital scale, for example, and then obviously the protractor as well. So that's something that I think needs to just be looked at more carefully. But after everything was set up, I moved the system, the, the two speakers and, and the turntable, into a room on a table in the house and put a record on it and gave it a spin. And this is what it was like.
Then later, to test the Bluetooth functionality, I switched the turntable from phono to Bluetooth, had it paired with my little Fio player, my little, little pocket sized, it's almost like a Sony Walkman except it's Fio, paired it up with the Bluetooth feature, very, very seamless, it, it instantaneously recognized it as turntable, I selected it, it linked it, and played some digital files uh, that were YouTube copyright, copy protected for free, free files that I downloaded from YouTube, and this is how that went. didn't have any opportunity or ability to use the Bluetooth out on the dial where you select between phono, Bluetooth in, and Bluetooth out. I suppose if you had a pair of Bluetooth enabled powered speakers that you could use rather than the speakers that were provided in this particular uh, uh, setup, uh, then that probably the part that you would use for that. I don't own those types of speakers, so I wasn't able to test that function. Okay. Um, everything else that I tested did work perfectly. It worked exactly as, as advertised. Uh, so I thought that part of it was pretty good. The sound of it is, is, is pretty good. So I think, you know, this is a type of a system that's entry level. Um, it's going to work best in a smaller near field environment. I have a very large living room and, and, and so the sound can kind of get lost in a big space. But if you like in an office, if the, the credenza behind your desk, it would be perfect to sit there. To listen to some music while you're working in a dormitory at college um, you know or boarding school 
a downsizing in, into a small apartment, a small room, a bedroom with a, a dresser it would be great for, for that type of thing. So um, that basically sums up my experiences with it. I've had a good time uh, playing with this, this uh, UD 006 all-in-one turntable system. Uh, I will not be keeping it. I'm probably going to gift it to a neighbor who has a 13-year-old daughter who's expressed an interest in music. I think she'd get a thrill out of having it, so I'm going to be sending it over there um, for Christmas since we're already getting into the holiday season. So yeah, that's it. Um, if you've made it this far into this video, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. Either way, it's all about generating algorithms that YouTube will help other traffic get generated to, towards the channel. Um, so that's about the size of it. That is my review of the Retro Life Player UD006 all-in-one turntable uh, Bluetooth system. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. And then, one last thing, sorry about that clickbait picture. I hate it when YouTube channels do that kind of thing. But I wanted to show the retro player vibe, the whole thing with the old style Morant stereo receiver. So it accomplished its purpose. She's long in the tooth, almost 50 years old, cranky, needs a recap. And that's about all, oh, wait, one more thing. Did you notice the gargoyle sitting on top of the left speaker? I mean, no audio review of a piece of equipment could be considered complete without a gargoyle overlooking things, right? Bye.